Mike Levitt back with the last of this three-part video series showing how to make a cardboard Air Jordan. If you followed with me up to this point, you've got a shoe mostly constructed. There's just a lot of detail left, so let's get to it. The bulk of the remaining detail comes down to finishing the sole. We have three pieces to do this. One piece goes in the lower back heel with the air bubbles cut out. The second piece is the long skinny black one from my template with two little snake heads on either end. The last old trim piece is the one with the large spade shaped ends from my template. Before applying glue, bend, shape, and condition these three trim pieces. Apply glue to the inside of all three trim pieces and to the edge of the sole. When the glue is tacky, lay the back heel sole trim in place, centered on the back of the shoe and aligned to the air bubble holes. Next, take the upper back sole trim piece, the one with the snake ends, and place it snug tight above the lower trim piece you just glued. Then lay the front sole trim in place, overlapping the snake heads of the second trim piece, and press all trim pieces down tight. You can also roll the side of the shoe on a table to press the trim pieces into place. Let's glue our lace grommets to the brackets. Apply glue to the end of the lace brackets as referenced by my template. Also apply glue to the inner smaller sides of two of the grommets. When the glue is tacky, press the grommets in place. Before applying glue to the heel pole, bend and condition it into shape. Dry fit it in place, note its location, and apply glue inside the heel pole into the back of the shoe body. When the glue is tacky, press the heel pole in place. To lace the shoe, first you want to rub the long, thin strip of cardboard you cut out on the edge of a table to make it soft and pliable. My lacing technique is kind of the way they used to lace up shoes in old department stores. You start with the laces just like you would a normal shoe, with the two ends and the bottom two holes, and make sure you've centered your lace in your shoe. Then instead of crisscrossing the laces from side to side across the shoe, I take one lace across one side, thread it in the next hole, and leave it. Then I take the lace I was just ignoring, thread it across into the next hole, and leave it. I did the final details of the logos by tracing my template and cutting out little bits of found paper and cardboard. I really hope you'll try your own method of capturing these nice little final details. Well, that's all folks. This is one of the trickiest cardboard shoes I've ever made. So if you made it this far, congratulations. I'm impressed. I hope you had some fun. This is one of those projects where it really helps if you're one of those kinds of people who likes to be challenged in order to have fun. Until next time, and please check out my other cardboard shoe tutorials if you haven't already.